Ukrimo Media's Polity Amtabi Madiba Mapungube Institute for Strategic Reflection Fellow and former Director Kole Lwakashe Katia joins me to unpack the gold rhino Mapungube Ballet. So as a person who is involved in the content creation of the gold rhino Mapungube Ballet, can you briefly talk to us more about the inspiration of this ballet show? Well, uh, the inspiration really is the heritage of Mapungupe, which is really the World Heritage Site located in Limpopo. And it's an Iron Age site. And it's, I mean, it's got um, United Nations recognition and is created as a World Heritage Site because of its universal value and contribution towards the evolution of humanity. So it's a key marker of the existence of a civilization during the Iron Age and uh, this evidence of, you know, working with gold and hence the golden rhino because uh, the, the golden rhino is one of the artifacts that we found in the 1930s when there was that initial excursion by uh, some landowners and their visitors uh, who had gone there, I think it was uh, during the Christmas holiday, and one of them happened to be a student at the University of Pretoria. So when they uh, came across these golden artifacts, the young man actually uh, motivated for the group, his companions, to actually send it to the university, to one of the professors there, who was interested in, you know, uh, early African uh, civilizations. And that's how the story began. And then the involvement of the university and actually this um, research that took place at Mapungupwe is the longest research project ever in the history of our country. Starting from that moment in the 1930s, all the way up to about 2000, when it ended with the repatriation, because what was found there was actually human remains. So it was a burial site with lots of skeletal remains from the human beings that were buried there, but they were buried with these golden items. So that's the inspiration and hence the naming of the ballet around the golden rhino. And we know the golden rhino has become quite a, a a key uh, symbol in our country's collective identity. You do have the the order of Mapungupwe is one of the highest awards you'd get from the president. And I mean, we're going through that phrase right now where um, these orders are being bestowed upon uh, different individuals. I mean, I also worked for a long time for an institute called uh, the Mapungupwe Institute for Strategic Reflections, MISTRA. And that is why I became involved when the creators of the ballet we're trying to come up with a, an authentic story and uh, and, and the approach Mapungupo and, and as an in-house uh, expert in that area, then I was assigned to the project. And can you tell us more about the staging and storyline of the show? Well, this is actually the most challenging part because, uh, you know, with ballets, and this is something that I had to also learn during the process, is that uh, there's a, a particular format that uh, ballets would uh, assume and usually uh, maybe related to, you know, what we know as fairy tales. You know, you've got the Swan Lake and, you know, all the different iconic stories, which are, well, mostly Eurocentric. And, and I mean, as an art form, ballet is really, you know, it's got its origins in European and very classical culture. And it's combined with classical music and you have the orchestra and, and so on, even with the outfits. But in this case, we had to try by all means to bring in the authenticity, because if we're going to be talking about uh, Mapungupe, Golden Rhino, and to try to imagine the society that uh, thrived during this time, then surely we had to bring in a bit of the local knowledge to it. And, and that was my biggest role to try and uh, bring in a, a level of authenticity. It was difficult because, I mean, you're working with people who are trained in classical ballet. And uh, for example, you know, I remember we had this idea that even with the music, because you usually have an orchestra, how about then we include some instruments that have African origins, like the mbira, and there's uadi, which is string. And I mean, Euro European 
musical instruments also have string. You've got drum, you know, which is the arrow. I, I don't know what they call it, but it's, it works with A. So we also have the drum in the African sense. And uh, I mean, that was welcomed by the, the, the team. And those are the things that we tried to workshop and brought in musicians who are experts in uh, indigenous um, musical instruments, indigenous music to try and fuse it into it, but also even with the, the outfits, you know, the costume design. Uh, the team uh, also partnered with uh, David Kleiling, who was also part of the whole process. So we all had workshops where in all the different aspects would um, actually try to brainstorm ways to make the storyline as authentic as possible, but while working within the confines of the fact that this is still a ballet and it's got its origins in a different place, but we would try by all means to be true to the stories. So what you will see is that um, in terms of costume design that had to be paid attention to, the way the, the, the actual golden dry you know, is portrayed. And in some instances we had difficulty, you know, for example, in a ballet, they would say there has to be a good and evil. And in, in, in trying to animate that, then you'd find that you have to be very, very careful. I remember there was discussion around, you know, maybe how about the Quena people, uh, the, the bad guys, because we have to create that element, but then you have to be mindful to the local ways of knowing way in the Quena is a crocodile, which is a very important symbol or totem in Southern African uh, communities. And uh, and that is something that we had to also work around that we need to be sensitive when we name certain things, you know, all in the name of trying to be authentic to the notion that this is a ballet, but while being mindful of, you know, the African way of knowing certain symbols and, and certain things. And when will the production of the show run from? It will be running from the 26th, which is tonight. Uh, tonight is the opening night, uh, 26th of April at the State Theatre, and it will run right through to the 30th. Now, this is still, I mean, we've been trying to pilot this and trying to raise funds and um, with the hope that this can extend into a much bigger production that can even, you know, get to travel the world uh, like other South African productions before that. But as we know that, you know, it's a long journey of trying to uh, mobilize the resources. But also what we're hoping with the staging is that we'll get, get feedback that can also help to improve on how to tell the story in the most authentic way so that we can have, you know, an, an African ballet, so to speak, and who knows, maybe there could be a whole tradition that emerges out of that. And lastly, Polela, what other important aspects can the audience look out for tonight? What the audience can look out for, for example, I think there was a lot of creativity when it came to light. Uh, and again, this is an extension of these debates that would have about, you know, how do you represent uh, bad or, or good and evil and um, and we've got a technical team that works with lighting to animate the stage so that some of the messaging can also be carried out through manipulating the lighting of the stage. So there's a lot of that. So it's not just the dancers on stage. We have the excellent outfits designed by David Lally. We've got the lighting guys. We've got the music, the music that is also made in a way that's still classical, but at the same time tries to recognize that, you know, the story is local. So um, I would say expect an African ballet. I, I wouldn't say authentically so, because that will be blowing our own horn, but we do trust that we would be able to present uh, a somewhat authentic uh African ballet that can be easily accessible to, to especially young kids because uh, this is part of the curriculum, you know, in our schools, which is very important. And at times it can be very abstract to try and even imagine these things or this deep history of our country. So this is one way of uh, telling that story. I mean, there's multiple ways that that story can be told because it is quite a significant story that all of us should know really. That was Ole Lwakashe Katia speaking to Crimea Media's Polity about the Gold Rhino Mapungube Ballet.